Hey, Brian, thanks for uh, thanks for being willing to do this interview with me, man. Yeah, no problem. No I really problem. appreciate it. For for everyone that's going to be watching this this interview, tell us who you are, where you're at, what you do, and then we'll go from there. Well, my name is Brian Pounds, and I uh, I pastor a church in Vernon, Texas. Been here officially three years as of this last week, and uh, spent about twelve years in three different youth pastor positions before I got here. Um, so this is my first senior pastor. And, and learning a lot about what it, what it really means to lead uh, an entire church process. Um, as far as, uh, you know, who I am and, and kind of my background and, and certainly uh, my struggles with, with weight, I, I think, honestly, begin very young. I mean, I, I've got this picture of me when I was a baby laying on this carpet. They like to lay us on carpets a lot in 1975. And... Uh, <laughs> Like, uh, I mean, I am shaped like a football. I mean, I, I was big. I was a big baby. Uh, um, I, I was having a conversation with my mom this last week about some of the things my my son is doing now, throwing fits, and and she she would say, you know, I was uh, I was very dependent on the bottle when I was little. I did, didn't like to go to sleep without something in my mouth, and, and you know, I think a lot of those things probably lent to that. Although I don't really blame. I don't have a lot of blame or bitterness, uh, but, you know, I think things from infancy kind of set a pace for our life. And, and, and all throughout life, uh, you know, as just concisely as possible, um, all throughout life, my mom was ridiculed for her weight by family members, uh, led to her uh, being overweight. Um, she, she got married, divorced. Uh, after she had three boys, and, and that, that only further led to her insecurities. And, but all my life, as long as I can remember, my mom has been obsessed with her weight. Uh, uh, every single fad diet, uh, people kind of ridicule me now because, uh, you know, when I drink soda pop, I only drink diet, but that's not because I necessarily uh, don't like. The real stuff is just diet soda is all we've ever known. Uh, because that's all my mom would ever have because it was diet everything. Um, I remember as early as 12 years old, my mom putting me on Weight Watchers. Uh, I was eating all this fabricated Weight Watchers food. And, you know, I look back at pictures and uh, I've looked back at pictures with other people. And, you know, they'll make comments of, man, that was back when you were skinny. But I, I was never really skinny uh, for any stage in my life. I, I, I wrestled when I was in third grade uh, and I, oh, excuse me, fourth grade and in fourth grade, I, I wrestled at the 120 pound weight and mm. uh, I was wrestling guys much older than me. Uh, I got, I never won a single wrestling match because I was wrestling guys so much older and more skilled because of my weight alone. And um, my mom's insecurity fed my insecurities. I was always insecure about what I looked like through high school. And, you know, I can look back now and, and say, man, I'd like to get back there. But um, that's only in, com in comparison. Uh, I struggled with my weight um, going into, you know, my early life. In college, I actually got pretty militant about my weight and, and lost some. Uh, I know that's kind of odd. But I lost weight in college. But then when I got out in college and got in ministry, uh, ministry was just surrounded with food and food opportunities and youth ministry especially is your years of pizza hot dogs ice cream socials bake sales you know you just constantly surrounded by food and i had a, a real big problem um, before i went into my youth pastorate in claremore oklahoma uh, i had got pretty militant again about my weight and, and gotten down where i was looking pretty good and then in claremore I just had a gradual letting go, and I calculated my weight gain in over an eight-year period of time, and I had gained consistently one pound a month for seven years, and I got at my very heaviest, I weighed 380 pounds. I have a picture in my room that I took with my daughter for, I guess, a gift for my wife for Mother's Day. 
I look back at that picture, and I was at my heaviest. And I see pictures of myself where my gut was hanging out of my shirt. And I just, you know, how, just, just real embarrassing. And, I, you know, you, and then my pastor pulled me aside one day and, and in the most loving and grace-filled way possible. He said, Brian, you, you really need to do something about your weight. And that's the first time anybody in my life had set me down with any kind of love and compassion. Even my mom, I knew she did it because she loved me, but my mom only knew how to drive me from a standpoint of insecurity. And I, that was the first time anybody had ever set me down without ridicule and said, I'm concerned for you. And that really began a journey. And, and then I just, I kind of took off from there. And, but I took off in extreme ways, you know, filled with bad education. I, I killed myself with exercise, mm. took off on paces I couldn't keep, got in a boot camp. You know, I had no business being in a boot camp, but I was in a boot camp and I shed a lot of weight and, uh, but I shed it too fast and never really tapped in, uh, to the emotional and reasons why I ate. Which kind of just leads me to say, you know, at this point in my life, I'm finally confronting the spiritual side of this issue. I've always tried to tackle this from a physical standpoint. When the reality is, is my mind was broken, my self-control was shot, and I never really did tap into the reasons. And so I would lose weight and then I would go back and lose weight and go back. And so I would lose weight, I'd go back and I'd... I'd only come back a little bit, and then I'd buckle down again. And so this has been a long journey. Um, when I started Fit Pastors, uh, I weighed 355. And so it wasn't my heaviest. But, um, you know, through through about an eight-week period now, you know, I'm down to about three 336. And so 18 and a half pounds, you know, I, it, it's coming off slow. But I'm really being victorious. I'm finding victory in the fact that, that I'm, I'm learning the reasons why I eat. And it's not so much of a physical issue. Not letting my physical self define who I am. Uh, but really finding victory in choices. And learning, learning myself. Learning and understanding that this is really, really an addiction. Um, and it's an addiction the same as any other addiction it's a it's an addiction as as much as we shun the other addictions you know if we were if i was a pastor and i admitted that i was addicted to methamphetamines i'd lose my ministry if i was a pastor and i and i and i stood up before my congregation and said i'm addicted to alcohol i'd lose my ministry if i was addicted to to pornography, I would lose my ministry. But week after week after week, we stand up there addicted to food, and we just dismiss it. And uh, while while I'm not resigning my pulpit, I have, in a sense, had to resign my pulpit a little bit and understand, say, you know, I've got to get me in order. And and the very interesting thing about it is, the more that I get me in order, the more the pulpit and the church naturally falls into order. Um, I fear I don't have to make so much happen because I become the living example. And so, you know, I, I'm I, I'm not really in the middle of this journey. I'm on the genesis of it. You know, I, I'm in the genesis of this thing and, and uh, realizing it's going to be a long one, but uh, I'm finding freedom in my spirit, which when I'm finding freedom in my mind and my mind is renewing, the physical self falls into order. And, and then I'm finding friends, man. I'm finding friends. I'm finding that there are people out there to help me that care more about my dollar. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, you know, no one's capitalizing on the fact that I'm fat really, you know, and, keeping me, trying to keep me unhealthy so they can make 
continually more money off of me. But, you know, I'm finding out that, um, you know, most of all, there's just a, there's a, there's a God who who's forgiving and loving and that he has servants that are the same and uh, just finding an incredible amount of freedom, you know, in this journey. Yeah, I, it's been it's been humbling to be a part of this with you, man. And I, I know we've known each other for for quite a while, and and I've kind of watched you from a distance, you know, at times make some strides, and then you know maybe uh, come off that that health journey. And it, it's been a it's been a journey. That, you know, there's no one size fits all. There's no here's three ways to do it, or here's the ten steps, or it's different for everybody. And what I appreciate about you is it's so internal. You're processing everything. You're, you're what we really try to get guys to do is own their own health, figure out your own rhythm, figure out what foods work well for your body. And so, you know, a lot of people are going to be watching this and, and I hope that they're going to find encouragement to say, Hey, I, I, I relate to Brian. And, and here's the thing is we're not doing some interview after you you know you're right here like you said in the genesis right in the beginning you're in the thicket you're you're trying to face these food your wife just went you went to Chili's on Saturday and and man that was really hard that was a place that used to be really defeating for you and you overcame and you did well but what would you say to guys watching this what would you tell yourself six months a year from now maybe when you're further along and you're looking back what would you say as a way of, hey, stay the course, you can do this. Um, anything you want to say? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I would I would say that, you know, we, we have to get in our minds that, that we're forever on the journey. Um, I think that, it, I think kind of subconsciously, what we try to preach to ourselves and others sometimes is that we're going to get to a place one day to where it's going to be utopia. You know, we, we preach heaven a lot. We, we, and we have in our minds a utopia. We, we have in our minds that, Hey, you know, suffering is going to come, you know, all the tears are going to be wiped away from your eyes. Everyone's going to look, you know, like Schwarzenegger in his prime. And we're all just going to be, you know, live happily ever after. And, and, and I think that, while certainly we believe in heaven, um, I think we've really downplayed our roles here on earth. And and I, I think what I would say is this, you know, the Bible over and over again talks about perseverance. And that is just something we don't preach a lot of. Um, even when we're preaching about suffering, we preach about praying to where it all ends not persevering through it. And, and, and I heard a pastor say recently at a funeral, one of the most profound things, he said, the way of, the way of the cross is not just overcoming suffering. It's also about embracing it. And Jesus taught us how to do that. And, and even Jesus himself said, you know, there's in this world, you're going to have trouble. Uh, but, but, you know, take heart because I've overcome the world. And so our confidence lies in him. I would just say that the scripture that keeps coming to my mind over and over and over again for this journey is do not grow weary in doing good. What it, but what that says is that you, that that's going to be a potential, that's potential. Um, we all are going to have potential in growing faint of heart. And even when we get, in our health journey to a place where maybe we reach our goal weight, we've still got a life of maintenance to do. And it, it's, it, it sounds doom and gloom to say it's never going to end. Um, but I think the hope and the victory we, we have is it gets easier over time as we train our minds to think right. Um, but, you know, I would say st don't ever look at this like a diet that you're on for a time and it's going to end. We've got to just, I've got to destroy that thinking. We, we all have to destroy that thinking and just do not grow weary in doing good because in the right season, the do, you, you're going to reap exactly what you've sown. That's right. One last question, man. And then I want you to pray over everyone that's going to be watching this. Uh, 
somebody's sitting here and they're watching it and, and man, it's not going good. They're, they're not, they're not doing good in their health. They're extremely overweight or they're, they're addicted to foods that they haven't even begun to take a first step. They're hopeless. They're defeated. They've tried weight loss stuff. They've tried diets. They've done the boot camps. They're sitting here thinking, man, I, I'm just struggling to even take a first step. What would you say? I would say, let your pride go. Um, the Lord gives grace to the humble. Um, that's what it it took. That's what it took me the longest to do. Uh, really let my pride go. Even when I got involved in previous endeavors, I carried my pride with me. Uh, I quit boot camp. I, I was I was having a lot of success in that endeavor, um, but I quit it, and I told the coach I can do this on my own. And I'm just going to let you know if if I could just maybe just put this in a neat little package for you and help you let your pride go. You can't do this on your own. Um, you can't do it on your own. The things that matter in life, the things that bring us the most joy, have to be done inside of a community. Uh, the more I read the scriptures, the more I understand the church, the more I understand that we were never supposed to do anything in isolation. And that you need to take a step and reach out for help. And when you do that, God is going to meet you with the grace that you need and through the entire journey. And, you know, his word's going to remain true. He is not going to leave you or forsake you. Um, but he cannot hold the hand of someone who's refusing to hold his. And so I just say you just got to let, your, let go of your pride and do it. Just take the step, and I promise you, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. That's good. Will you pray? Will you pray today? And I know, yeah. I know you know how to pray. Well, Father, I just pray for, uh, for everyone watching this. And, um, man, it, it's not easy. Uh, we're, we're, talking, we're talking about an arena of life, uh, an issue of life. That, that that is killing more people on this planet than than so many other things combined. Um, we would tend to focus on what we would call real evil things, but 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 the enemy is crafty and he's subtle. And subtly he has come in and robbed ministers and people of their health. In the name of selflessness we've become increasingly selfish, indulging in things we shouldn't indulge in, giving ourselves over to the flesh that Christ died that we could have victory over. And I pray for everyone watching this and who, who, who I pray for those right now that are quite, still questioning the journey, saying to themselves right now in their minds, this isn't going to work for me. Nothing else has. I, I, I just would challenge them lord god let them be challenged in their spirit it can work because lord it is created in a way that is biblical it is created in a way that it puts the focus in the right areas takes the focus away from our our, our physical appearances helps us to drop our insecurities allows for transparency and candidness lord god in, in conversation and just gives us a way and an outlet. So I just pray, Lord God, for pride to be able to fall to the ground, a, a humble spirit to take over. And for us, uh, for those watching, Lord, just be willing to submit to this journey and find encouragement through it, find encouragement through my story, through any other story and interview. Uh, Lord God, I just pray for their lives and we pray for their journey. Uh, and we're going to speak in faith in advance success over them. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brian, for taking that extra time today. 
All right, really, thanks a lot. Really excited about your continued journey, man, and and uh, really honored that you get to be part of one of my huddles, man. It's been a lot of fun. I appreciate it. All right, man. Take it easy. Uh-huh. Bye.